Let's talk about Anthony Davis, guys, and the Pelicans. According to Mark Stein of the New York Times, interim GM Danny Ferry, remember, there's been a management change there in the New Orleans. He intends to press the NBA on its reported insistence that Anthony Davis continue to be allowed to play. You see some video there of the night that AD bruised his shoulder. They are reportedly going to make that sort of the centerpiece of them <laughs> saying, hey, what if he had a serious injury? And this would affect his trade value the same way when Boogie Cousins went down for that same team in, this, in the winter last year. What do you think? Do they have more of a case? Can they point to the NBA and say, look, look, see, that happened? Yeah, they, they had a case all year. I mean, AD is uh, one of these guys that these little knickknack injuries just have him out for four or five games. And it's like throughout the whole season. And here's another case of it. Mm -hmm. um, with his value being so high, and they didn't make a trade for him at the trading deadline, and you can't do anything until this offseason, I will sit him down. I, will, I don't want to risk that. I, this is a tough one, and I tend okay. to be pro-labor, and I appreciate the league's concerns. It's optically really bad. But you have a top five player. Yes. The, the league just right. to define it. The league's concern is you have a top five player who is at least generally healthy, and the idea that you would just sit him down, and they have national TV games. They shouldn't. Right. For the rest of the season is not a look that they want or they f can feel they can go back to their television partners or anyone and say hey we're just they, this they do it all the time but but, but here, here here's the thing the health of this individual is going to determine the path of this franchise for the next seven eight or nine years what they derive from that trade and i hate speaking about players in the language of asset management mm -hmm. But, like, that's just the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen, this is not unprecedented. Among the top ten players in the league, Paul George has missed, you know, the better part of the season. We've seen Boogie Cousins. I mean, Russell Westbrook's had injuries. I mean, it is, and he's not terribly durable. I mean, that's the thing with AD. No, no. He's not one of these irons. And so I understand, like, I just don't know how you can deprive an organization their self-determination. I, I totally support, I mean, Anthony had the right to do and, and uh, express his desire for a trade. And the franchise also has a right to manage its assets to its, it, to its benefit. I, I, get, I completely get both sides. I get both sides so much that it's literally the question we've been asking since the day of the trade deadline because it seems like an impossible situation and it's very hard to say what the solution is going to be. Mm -hmm. Because look, if Anthony Davis hadn't come to them, and say, yeah, okay, you know, I know everyone decided that the inflection point for this was going to be the summer when you offered me the Supermax, but I already know. I can already see where this is going. So I'm just going to tell you now that I'm not going to want to sign that Supermax. I'm not going to want to stay because that way you have the most, you know, you could, you could trade me this trade deadline if you want. If he hadn't said that to them, they would be playing him right now. And he would still be this, quote, valuable asset. And we would all sort of be talking about the fact that, hey, we all can see the writing on the wall here. He's not going to tell them he's staying this summer, right? If they didn't make the playoffs, let's say this whole incident at the trade deadline never happened. If they didn't make the playoffs, which they were certainly not in a position to make, they would not be sitting him no, for the last right. couple minutes of the season just in case, right, they wanted to trade him no, this but summer. The well, so, is, but their lottery situation, they could have kind of managed him a little bit. Yeah, and look, I, again, I, I'm with you. I have real sympathy for where the Pelicans are coming from here. I am worried about him getting injured because mm -hmm. this stuff happens, especially, mm -hmm. as you know, Tracy, when you're not focused the way you're normally mm -hmm. focused to play basketball, that's when a lot of these injuries happen. Um, so I'm not saying they shouldn't sit him. It's just bizarre because if he had not come to them and had a verbal conversation two weeks ago, they wouldn't be trying to sit him, even though the same, quote, risk would be there. And, and then on the player, as a player, you don't want to go out there and, and, and go through the motions, right? Because then you're doing your team a disservice, the players that you're playing with. Like, you don't want to do that. Right, but he says he wants to be playing basketball. He doesn't want to just sit for six months. He doesn't want to be playing. And as Mark <laughs> pointed out, they've actually been really scrappy and effective without him. Yeah, which is interesting. Which they might not want to be, again, as you point out, for their lottery. It's complicated, guys.